All right, what's going on everyone? Hope y'all are having another great day. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to calculate unlevered returns as well as levered returns on a deal. So I'm gonna do less talking on this one and just kind of explain to you the logic behind some of this stuff. So on the unlevered returns, the purchase is gonna be the actual purchase price. No debt on the property. So it's an outflow, we wanna make that negative. Cash flow from operations, once again, this is before debt, so it's going to be our NOI. Carry that over. We're going to mess up some formatting there with the border, but that's okay. We're going to sell this in year 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the year 11 NOI, and you're going to divide that by a terminal cap rate. So in this example, we're going to use a 6% cap upon exit. Selling costs, that's another outflow. So we're gonna take this 10 million, we're gonna multiply that by a negative. Right now we have a 3% sales cost assumption. So there we go, 303,000. So our total unlevered cash flow is going to be the sum of all of those inflows and outflows, okay? So that's the total unlevered cash flow on the deal. So that's all the cash flow for 10 years if you were not put any debt on the property. So the next is going to be our unlevered cash on cash return. And how we calculate that, we're going to use this cash flow from operations. We're going to divide it by a negative purchase price because we want this number to show up as a positive. So 5.54%, carry that over. Oh, we need to lock that cell. So we lock that, that cell there. There we go. I also like to see an average. So 5.99% average cash on cash. IRR, equity multiple. There's a lot of different ways to, to do this. I'll show you how I do it. So basically that formula, the sum if, it's taking all of your inflows, dividing it by all of your outflows. So pretty easy. Um, a lot of people use an absolute function, but for that to work, you have to have a couple of different numbers to use. So this one's easier. You can watch that video a couple times and, and see how I did it. Okay, so there are your unlevered returns. So before debt, over 10 years, you're averaging nearly 6% cash on cash, 6.38% internal rate of return, and a 1.66 equity multiple, okay? So now we'll do our levered returns. So this is the property with debt. And to get this purchase price now, this is basically gonna be our total equity investment. So we're gonna take that purchase price and deduct a loan. So with the loan, our, our total equity in is 2.29 million. Cash flow from operations is now going to be our before tax cash flow, so cash flow after debt. Once again, we're going to mess up these borders and formatting, but that's okay. So the sale, we're going to link this up here. It's going to stay the same. Loan payoff. Okay. I went ahead and did us a favor and saved the time, and I have the, the loan balance for each year. So in year 10, our loan balance is 5.529 million. Sales costs, once again, will be the same. We'll link that above. And our total levered cash flow is going to be same as above. It's going to be the sum of all of those outflows and inflows. Okay. Cash on cash in this example is going to be cash flow from operations divided by a negative equity in. We're gonna lock that cell. Okay. Average of the cash on cash. You want it to be higher. It's actually lower, so kind of a 
key indicator that you have negative leverage on the deal. We'll get into that in another video. Return rate of return, equity multiple. We should be able to use the same formula from above. Let's give it a shot. All right, so there you go. Those are your return me metrics. Looks like I have a little typo here. Return metrics for unlevered and levered. Um, you can definitely tell the difference with debt on the deal, what it can do for you. We will have a video and discuss positive and negative leverage and what it means. But for now, that'll get you started. That is how you calculate unlevered returns as well as levered returns.